Hello everyone and welcome to another video here today. We are actually going to be covering Esther on his Laura. We have Amir with us today. How are you doing today, Amir? I'm doing pretty good. Getting to see Esther play Laura as he, uh, I think has recently come back after a bit of a trip. It seems to be have, a, have some trip buff where he's gone up so much RP in the past couple days and weeks. Uh, it's just insane. Yeah, exactly. No, I definitely heard, yeah, from since the patch that just recently came out, Esther's come back to play and has actually, I believe, climbed something like 1.3k RP in a matter of a few days. Laura just recently got some really nice buffs, as well as some new fancy items that we're going to be probably seeing in today's game that really, really make Laura shine. And we're really excited to kind of highlight and show you guys why that's so good. Yeah, and uh, we even see early on in Beach, I'm pretty sure Esther is known for doing this a bit too often, just running out down whoever he sees in this uh, in this first zone, as Laura has a really strong early game, a lot of her damage coming from these auto attacks and weaving in these Qs, a very complex, but uh, straightforward character once you start to understand what her abilities do. Yeah, and speaking of that, we'll go over the abilities for anyone that doesn't know anything about Laura. So Laura's passive is Phantom Thief. How this basically works is that she'll deal enhanced auto damage every eight meters of movement she does or after every spell that she casts. So this is just an auto attack weaving enhanced uh, ability for her Q, Thorn Liliac. This is just a frontal cone that can be used and every time that it hits, it has a chance to be enhanced. So on the third enhanced, it will actually strike twice. So this is the frontal that you're seeing there for her W's calling card. It's a skill shot that creates an AOE slow and shreds defense if the targets hit. Uh, her E is Sly Step. This is her dash. She actually can't dash over walls with this, but she can uh, cast this basically after every single uh, spell she casts. This is actually not affected by CDR, so she can kind of spam this quite a bit. And then last is Lee's Ultimate Twilight Heist. Uh, she dashes and becomes unstoppable, and if it's used on a wall or a target affected by your W, you'll knock them up dealing additional damage. Yeah. Looking at a, a lot of Laura's abilities, it it makes her sound extremely mobile in which she is, and that's probably one of the hardest things about playing her, figuring out where you should be using all of this mobility to actually stand in a fight. Because uh, when you watch Esther versus a, a first-time Laura, Esther will start positioning himself to dodge every ability that's being thrown, reprocking this E every time he has it up, and weaving in all of these abilities. So, uh, I don't know, It comparing it to someone new, actually seeing him just like triple, double dash there, I too many times that I couldn't even tell just to catch up and help with the bear. No, exactly. And I mean, it's, it's really exciting to see because especially once you have a grip on a character that has this type of mobility, utilizing those dashes to dodge abilities is really, really important, which I'm sure we will see quite a bit of. And also being able to just get into the right position to help prioritize the right targets for your team yeah and we're gonna see maybe a fight come up pretty soon as uh i think there's a yeah this team is now converging on esther but i don't know if they're actually gonna look for something esther actually finding the calling card onto the lenore or sorry the uh, uh so that i was lenore. can't even get yeah lenore um, but things happening so fast, I couldn't even keep up. Esther just instantly using the calling card onto her, and then after that, using his R on top of her so that he connects the chain. She can't really escape it, as the only way to escape a calling card plus, uh, plus Laura ult is usually by using a dash. With Lenore not having a dash, it's very hard, and basically a guaranteed knockup and a lot of damage. Exactly, and then basically that allows her team to be able to set up and make a play. So we can definitely see, and again, they're immediately dodging that Marcus engage with her dash. So we'll have to, well, really in interesting to see how this kind of like plays out. Again, Laura's more of the assassin type character with her high mobility and her high burst damage, especially because where she can weave in a lot of combos really fast to take down uh, priority targets. Yeah, even with her being an assassin, her dueling potential isn't uh it shouldn't be anything that people are looking over i know esther during the beginning of the season was playing a lot of ironclad with uh a few more health items and a lot of what he would do is just walk up hit card or well throw oh my god double objective from 
mutant wolves. But uh, instant <laughs> yeah, force up, core. Throw card and uh, if card connects, he'll look for the duel. If it doesn't, then he'll back up and uh, and try again after. Yeah, fishing for those calling cards to try and land full combos. Because once you have that calling card out, I mean, it makes your target so much more acceptable to everything that you can do and makes them take so much more damage. Yeah, and we do see he's looking over onto the uh, onto the Carla, unable to connect the card, but he's just using so many dashes, basically forcing the other two to focus on him as uh, we see a moon walking down to Esther on the floor. But yeah, sadly, missing that card and uh, taking all of his extra damage from the Carla, we're unable to uh, to really do anything after that because. Even though a lot of our damage is in our E, like proccing our passive off of E into Q, um, hitting these cards and hitting these ults is enough to usually half health someone. Well, I mean, exactly there. I mean, right now we didn't have a situation where it was a 2v3. They had the engage on them and we haven't necessarily hit our biggest power spike yet because we are still only on the one item. But even then, I mean, Esther definitely looked like they were putting a lot of pressure. If Carla wasn't an auto attack character that could easily just keep doing damage while Esther was dodging through uh, them. I think Esther could have definitely seen an angle to win this. And I yeah. definitely have now got the game completely bugged out as <laughs> Esther's going to be moonwalking for the rest of this session. Yep, yeah, we love the moonwalk. But uh, I think they're going to be contesting this mithril. I wonder if they're ever going to... Oh, okay. The other team does not want to contest the mithril. That is very confusing. I think they had priority on it first but i mean more rng to us yeah we'll take the we always take the free mithril's anytime that we can get that yeah getting a free mithril um probably going to be looking for a buy soon sitting at around 400 credits um i know that he's been building obviously our one of our newest or i guess re-released items eye of horus um it's been what a lot of people have been loving these uh skill lamp auto attack weaving characters that want to be proccing biotic infusion for the low low price of a tree which is actually insane it's so strong i think it's actually been hot fixed nerfed twice now as of the making of this video so it's really really strong and i think it's still strong i think people are still running it even after the hot fix yeah it's just being able to to slam a tree of all items because i think other than that um maybe the cheapest is a mithril on weapon uh i i think because i think um tazia weapon her usual upgrade uh the wind and fire wheels mm -hmm. has biotic but that is a mithril so being able to get it for a tree actually we're not going to be slamming a tree we're going for our headpiece here cyber stalker an item I love, but uh, I know it doesn't see too much play on many characters because obviously it does require to be you to be weaving in those auto attacks. But... Which is perfect though for characters such as Laura, where she's constantly yeah. just building up that stack to get the enhanced auto and then being able to up apply this. So I'm sure we're going to see Eye of Horus with this as those are both really good items to go with an auto attack character such as Laura, especially where she can weave in so many abilities so freely. And this is also a really nice, uh, really nice item for Laura in specific, as if she hits the calling card and then auto attacks a tank, they will start taking infinite damage. <laughs> you have the defense reduction from the calling card, and then you also are in increasing the amount of skill damage you deal to them with your Cyber Stalker. Oh, it's... she's taking this tree for Eye of Horus right now, for sure. This is it yep. right here. I see the uh, the metal in inventory. That's an easy craft, yep. And I think this is probably where we start walking around one-shotting everyone that we see. Yeah, I would say right now, if you are if you were looking to play this character, this is probably your peak power spike. You can obviously still upgrade your weapon and your shoes, but I think this is peak power spike for this character currently in the meta. These items are going to make Laura shred people. Yeah, getting the insane amounts of uh, increased damage from Cyber Stalker, the increase in your amp from your chest piece going Holy Orders, and then 
having your biotic on arm actually we're gonna see a big home oh, a lot of damage coming through there as the renice was sniper skilling in a bush but oh the ult actually connecting to deny bianca her e and i think we're just gonna keep going forward yeah that Antia was on the floor I, yeah there's sadly nothing else but the well, amount of damage we see come there yeah, I mean, we instantly caught up that Bernice. I mean, he died. The uh, the ultimate coming in there just to stop the knockup and actually canceling out the Bianca, so they got another kill. Very, very smooth for Master. And I mean, again, we watched both of them just get it completely obliterated. I mean, it wasn't a fair fight yet, but this is probably going to be the rematch against this team, and it's going to be sweet, sweet revenge. Well, there's the blink going in immediately. Does miss the calling card alt though because of the dash. Yeah, we're gonna see a lot of movement coming from Esther. Actually, just gonna keep going forward. Gets hit by the uh, the crossbow skill, sadly, but they're still able to take down the Carla. And during the fight, this I I don't know. Esther just his he's just able to react to everything because as he engages, going blink E forward, the Marcus ults out of the bush. And Esther instantly reacts, eing backwards to dodge the Marcus W, and he's just able to continue the fight from there. It, I don't know. Every time I see him make moves like this, it's like maybe I should be locking in some of these more uh, movement-based characters, like the Rozzy, the Tazia, the Laura, and uh, <laughs> and then I randomly get hit by a Hyunwoo E out of bush. And, yeah. <laughs> and I start wondering why I locked them in. Yeah, I mean, this definitely makes you feel like this character is so much fun to play. And honestly, if you can have the reaction speed to be able to dodge abilities like Esther does, they are definitely fun to play. Honestly, one thing I really want to talk about that fight, though, is the most impressive thing is after he blink dashed in, he used his calling card and then immediately went for his ultimate to basically try and cc instant kill the carla carla had to immediately that like dash blink out of that fight and was taken out of the fight instantly from that uh from that play alone and then esther was able to just instantly kill out the marcus and he's yeah, 1v3 right something now similar here <laughs> where he's just calling card onto front line alt them actually gonna be taken down by the tia a lot of damage coming out from her but i think our team is actually able to... Oh my god! I didn't know this was a Tazia video. Are we covering Tazia <laughs> right now? <Are> you... <laughs> Our Tazia just 1v2, 1v3. What the heck Clutching. kind of clutch is that? What? Blooming Plateau. And, uh... Okay, we see you. <laughs> yep, you know, on the... He's being added to the list right now. Yeah, but uh, hey, honestly though, that was a really, really, really um crazy engage from Esther. In my mind, because like, again, like I mentioned, you know sort of plays the assassin role but esther just played that as if he was the frontline engaged for his team and actually almost made it out of that perfectly fine like did so much damage by himself and then backed like if his team was there immediately as he engaged i think that was just an instant clean white without anyone going down yeah it was a lot of damage coming through um he basically solo killed the uh elena I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. Um, with just his like one rotation of his abilities, and he was sitting in there one v three. That was like the amount of things that he's able to do on this character is insane because he did all of that and then got out, and then continued the fight once his team got over. Yeah, a little unfortunate. Did end up going down. Had to rely on the goat Tazia, but hey, it still works out there. Yeah, but we're going to see him come forward here. Actually going to be destroying and shredding this Luke. I think he doesn't really have too much left. Because, yeah, we're going to see our Kathy out of range. Because, sadly, Laura does need things to be hitting if she wants to keep all of this mobility going. As traveling the distance to get your E back up isn't, uh... It's not too nice when you just have to run. No, exactly. Definitely need to be landing it to be able to keep weaving the combos going. But honestly, if he's not the one that has to engage and engages afterwards, it creates it so much easier for him. As we saw, like he, he can shred a tank. He can shred through a lot of people and do a lot of damage. So it's really nice if his team creates that space for him. Yeah, and we actually saw uh, there was a glacial ice on the floor after they had killed the Tia team. 
and he slammed it into his boots right after getting a mithril but oh my god we're actually gonna see the r connecting he called he connected the calling card while she was grabbing the meteorite and then right after she dashes knowing that she has nothing after that connect the alt but sadly cannot take down the yuki as dual sword skill might be a, a bit too far of a dash for him yeah but i and... think that's perfectly fine i mean they've definitely put this team in a really bad spot by putting yep. that kind of pressure onto the Estelle, immediately forced them into that awkward spot with red, and now uh, already had them have them buy back. So again, you know, not nothing super flashy, not the necessarily inherently the the killer on the team, but I mean, Esther's doing a lot of things to help make sure that his Tazi and Aiden are just getting the free clean sweeps of this of these fights. Yeah, we're not locking in Rosie needing to show that we're the main character 1v3 every fight we're jumping in dodging seven different abilities for our team and then making sure that whoever they need on the floor is defense shredded is being skill lamp bonus damage we're just throwing everything we can onto them pressuring their back line pressuring their front line and then running out of the fight after we get low no for sure burning as much resources as we can with this character but i won't lie i do think uh esther playing on laura definitely has main character energy i do <laughs> i do believe if we give him the right chance he will absolutely take that opportunity to try and prove to us that he is the main character of this lobby and i'm hoping to god that we do get to see some crazy play coming in from him but right now yeah he's his role is just to burn a lot of resources and then just gives the game completely free to his two teammates yeah i mean on this team when you're playing with Tazia, Aiden, Laura, it's like everyone here wants to be the main character. Uh, like everyone will hopefully be given their opportunity. We already <laughs> saw the Tazia just pop off 1v2 a fight. And I'm hoping maybe in this final fight or in one of these final few fights we see coming up that uh, we will see this Laura do the Laura things where we're dashing and dodging everything, auto attack weaving, throwing these cues in. Yeah, look, I'm not saying for his teammates to end, but let's get his teammates to end so he can get a clutch, please. We need to see this 1v3. Yeah, I mean, knowing Esther, um, seeing him play over many years now, going from character to character, I think ever since he's locked in Laura, it's been, uh, I don't know, it's, he's always just seemed to have a new peak every time he locks her in again. He'll be one game, do something, make the smallest mistake, instantly realize it and then the next game never make that mistake again always a good mindset to have of being able to just correct and make sure you don't make any mistakes moving forward yeah sadly i don't think we're going to notice any of uh what's going on under us yeah there's been there's brawls. A lot of fights. yeah just Oops. fight after fight people are being reduced to duos i don't think we have a solo yet but oh we are gonna catch one this is going to become a solo now because now it's just Carla left. I think yeah. I think this might be just cleaning up for the rest of the game here as there's still just a fight happening right below them and now they're going to clean up this Yuki. Yep, always connecting this calling card. I Just watching Esther throw this calling card every time, using the E into the W, it, it just looks so nice. But also, we're going to be seeing the Wick team maybe getting caught out, but connects the card and then instantly ulting denying him the opportunity to do anything just throwing so much damage on him that's tank by the way just falling right on the floor and then right after that we're seeing him dodge everything coming out from the kathy and staying within oh my god the blink from out of nowhere just ready to dodge it that that's what we're talking about that's the mvp play i mean esther hunting down that rat finds the wick team and yeah like you mentioned just just knowing once he lands that calling card that he can instantly cancel the Luke and then sh that armor shred, just doing so much damage to sweep them down. Yeah, and then I I wonder if he's actually going to take this. Is uh, is his team going to split into the solo duo? Make sure that she can't get a... Make sure Carla can't revive either side? Okay, but hear me out though. I, I, I understand the thought process of the solo duo strat, but the solo duo strat... Do you ever just feel like you're going to have that moment where you <laughs> lose the 1v1 and now your team's left 2v3 and it's the most awkward shit ever? Yeah, I uh, I watched someone do that. 
I think it was like two days ago where they solo duoed and uh, sadly their team had lost the solo fight and then they were forced into a 2v1. I think we might be having that right now. Yeah, let's... Uh, wait, if Blooming loses we... this... Wait, if Blooming loses this, this is... It'll be forced into a 2v3 for the final fight, but... Anime! I mean, protagonist, seen... come on! Lose Blooming! Yeah. Lose! Lose Blooming! Come oh, on! Esther's gonna get second. it! Esther's gonna get it! He's gonna 2v3! He's wait. gonna 2v3! Wait! They're gonna be forced into a 2v3 for our final fight. Anime protagonist time! Um... Let's go! <laughs> I, I knew it! Thank you! I told you that we're gonna end! <laughs> it's like I predicted this! You called it! This is, um... This is what you never want to see happen. But we're going to see it happen. And that's what we want to see here on the entertainment side. Because, yeah, this <laughs> is an interesting take. How do you win this? How do you take on a team? I mean, they're, they're, a, little, they're a little poor. They're a little poor. So maybe it's a chance, right? Yeah, I think in terms of RNG, you know, we're just about even. But it is still a 2v3. It's not going to be the easiest fight. But uh, let's see. It's probably going to be a calling card onto this front line. Oh, we actually see the Aiden connecting an E onto the Marcus. That's our in. We're going to see a lot of damage coming down to the Aiden. I think it's basically a 1v3 for Esther. Wow, 1v2 Esther, now. Esther perfectly dodging the Marcus engage with his dashes. Again, this is what you're talking about, where he weaves in and dodges abilities. Now the calling card onto the Hanwu. Hanwu just getting shredded. Same thing. It's like the second he gets the calling card, he knows that they're free food and is able to just take them on... Now it's yeah, a 1v2! Is, uh... <laughs> the anime protagonist is in! You uh, you called this exact game. Oh, Badly, yeah. you know, your teammates aren't always uh, playing perfectly. Sometimes you just have to play a bit more for fun, and it leaves him in a 1v2, but I think he connects the calling card. He's able to use the alt, dodging the actual Hyunwoo E. Oh, and he's dodging the harpoons! He's dodging the harpoons like it's nothing. Like, that's, again, this, this is just... So much good spacing. The dashes, they may look random, but they're actually intentionally making sure that he's not getting hit by Carla. Carla is actually missing every hook with these type of movements. It's actually so clean. And he's waiting for that calling card. He's just wanting to get it. Has to blink the harpoon. Ooh, actually oh, actually uh... misses all. <laughs> that was uh, it may be a bit of a fat finger ult, but okay. yeah, he does actually have the Hyunwu go down as I think he ran out of timer. Right? But I wonder if, uh, what's his in here? Because I don't think he's connected the calling card yet. There it is. He does have the alt up. It connects, and that's the kill. That is crazy. And just so everyone knows, we don't watch these beforehand. This was actually just a coincidence that we ended up finding something like this, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. And honestly, Esther was a prime example of how to play Laura there. That last fight, if you're looking to learn of this character, watch that last fight over and over and over again. That is exactly how you want to play and carry on, Laura. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we will see you in the next one.